Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I'm going to start with some announcements, and I'm going to give you some health department data and uh, lots of stuff to share this week. And the, I'll start by saying that the newsletter has forbidden news in it, and I have a forbidden video that's posted at wellnessforumhealth.com. So the way you get the newsletter is email me at pampopper at msn.com. And the way that you get the forbidden videos is to go to wellnessforumhealth.com. And then you can get the videos that way, okay? And I'm just making sure that this is recording because as I've mentioned a couple times, this is all new new to me and first time I've ever done this kind of thing. Uh, remember, we post these videos on BitChute and Parlor, so if anything would happen, you can view the videos there. Uh, the COVID book, COVID operation is available and we are sending autographed copies out from the office and you can also buy it on Amazon for Kindle or to have a paperback uh, issue sent to you. But of course we can't um, autograph the ones on Amazon, so you're welcome to buy them here as well. Um, MakeAmericansFreeAgain.com, lots going on. I'm gonna have some lawsuit information for you this week. So I'll probably be back in touch um, uh, toward the end of the week now that I'm filming these videos like throughout the week instead of all at once uh, with some information there. But I'm having conference calls Thursday, Mar uh, November 5th, 12th and 19th at noon Eastern time. And the purpose for those calls is to um, talk about organizing in your state. We're getting ready to file in another state or help somebody file in another state. Other states are organizing. So if you'd like some information on how you can start getting active with MAF, a lot of you've been saying, I wanna, I wanna feel like I'm doing something and we want you to be doing something. So listen to one of those conference calls. I'll be doing them on a regular basis and updating, 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 okay? Um, so that's going on. Uh, if your Thursday night is math and night here at the office, we show videos, we have conversations, we have food. We just, it's congregating and humans need to congregate every Thursday at 6 p.m. And I'm going to be talking on the conference calls about how you can start Thursday night MAFA meetings. We'll tell you how we're conducting ours and that sort of thing. So you can start building. We have to build a huge grassroots effort to deal with all the problems that we have right now in the United States of America. Um, and then, um, you know, lots of lots to share. I'll just wait and share that stuff at the conference calls. And then you guys know we put on the website um, all of the recordings of the conference calls. There's a, a video of when Tom, our attorney, was here in the office doing a workshop. So there's lots of stuff there already if you're new to this that you can watch or listen to and learn more about what's going on with MAFA. Um, letting go of the past um, intensive. We're doing two of these. I made a mistake last week and I didn't tell you about both dates, but the dates are November 20th and December 11th. So we're doing two um, of those. They're from 10 to three with some breaks with our um, incredible therapist, Kylea. And, um, you know, this is, I think, something that I've been talking about. We've been sharing a lot of emails back and forth that we are all leaving pieces of our past behind. And it is, some of us were doing this, we've been doing this all our lives, and it's kind of a life transition thing that happens from time to time for everybody. But it sure is accelerating right now, as we all know. So it might be a good idea if you're having trouble to participate in these. We're going to limit them to 10 per session because we really want people to talk and that sort of thing. If you put too many people in it, it becomes a little um, difficult for people to talk. And then remember, career training. If you're looking to, if you're a health professional and you're saying, I've had it with traditional health care, uh, this might be a good time to talk to us. And if you're not a health professional, but you think, boy, I'd like to get involved in helping people with their health, because if ever there's a time to do it, now would be it. Uh, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. So the first thing I want to talk about is Florida. All right. And what I'm going to encourage you to do, because I, I can do screen share. I learned how to do that. When you go to the Forbidden News this week, I'm so proud of myself because I'm technically an idiot and I managed to screen share something from my computer. But um, so I've got some graphs and charts, but they change daily. That's always my reluctance to give you references because by the time you watch this, the, they'll have updated it. But go to the Florida Department of Health's website and start looking at their data. Um, remember, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced uh, quite a while ago that he was going to open the state up. And um, he has been on a number of different news shows talking about the Florida approach, which has been very different than the way a lot of other states have handled this. 
And the Florida data look really, really good. I mean, that everybody was sounding the alarm when he did it, it's gonna be terrible and everything's gonna go bad. But um, the hospitalizations are down, emergency room visits are down, cases are down. Um, if you look at the charts, what you're gonna see is every, it's a straight line, but, but it's basically trending down. And it didn't really, the trajectory didn't change much as things opened up. And the thing that I would tell you to do when you're looking at data, because a lot of you are still caught up, I think, in this whole business of, oh my gosh, a case. Remember, the cases to be concerned about, this is my opinion, are the cases where somebody has severe symptoms, ends up in a hospital, the people who die from this. I could be a case if somebody tested me. Maybe I was exposed to this virus, but I'm sitting here, I'm 64 years old, I don't take any drugs, I'm healthy, I'm gonna work 18 hours today. Is anybody really consider, worried about me being a case? Like putting me into the case column is almost ludicrous because there's nothing the matter with me. And we have a lot of that kind of thing going on right now. So I want you to pay attention to the hospitalizations, the emergency room visits, the deaths, not the cases. The news focuses on the cases. You focus on these other metrics. And by the way, I'm telling you to check out Florida because the numbers look pretty good. Forget about the cases. I'm talking about people dying and all that. But check out your own state too. And I have to say, I get emails every day from people who say, you know, I finally just decided I'm going to check it out for myself. And you're right. A lot of the things you're saying are right, and I can see it for myself. That's why I keep telling you to check it out. What I can't do, by the way, is you asking me to check things out and analyze and send you documents and all that kind of stuff. We just don't have the resources around here to do it. We're kind of preoccupied right now. Um, trying to free the country. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Um, so anyway, um, check out Florida, but check out your own state too and look into it. Now, I thought this was really interesting. As you know, it's very important to follow the Centers for Disease Control uh, guidelines. And I want to tell you what they just published uh, last week, actually. Um, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention endorses voluntary surveillance testing in schools, but it says no mandates and says, quote, it is unethical and illegal to test someone who does not want to be tested, including students whose parents or guardians do not want them to be tested. Um, New York City's first day of random coronavirus testing in schools, the city's Department of Education ran more than 1,700 tests and found one positive case among 56 schools that participated. And city officials have said students whose guardians do not consent to the test could be barred from in-person education and offered remote learning. And this is in direct uh, opposition to what the CDC is saying. And so the, the, I want you to, again, pay attention. They've got 1,700 tests in 56 schools and they find one case. And then go to the New York City or New York State and New York City Department of Health Take a look at what the guidelines are for social distancing and masks and all that sort of thing. And just ask yourself, does this seem like it adds up? I'm just gonna let you figure it out for yourself, okay? But the CDC says mandatory testing, not a good idea. And then um, I wanted to, I'm gonna finish up today's session by reading something that was sent to me from an ER nurse. It was posted on Facebook, I believe. And I wanted to say that I don't necessarily agree with everything. I agree with most of this, but I think that this is something that is good to think about. And the fact that um, she's probably a lot more moderate than me is a good thing in terms of um, uh, you know, putting out um, balanced information. So, um, I've done my best to respect the diverse opinions regarding COVID-19 over these past few months. However, the ER nurse that posted this brilliantly sums up my train of thought. Please just take politics out of it and read this with an open mind using common sense. And this is from the ER nurse. Anyone out there who can tell me what our end game is with COVID-19? What is the magic formula that is going to allow us to sound the all clear? Is it zero cases? The only way that will happen is if we stop testing and stop reporting. Is it a vaccine? Well, it took 25 years for a chicken pox vaccine to be developed. The smallpox inoculation was discovered in 1796 and the last known natural case was in 1977. We have a flu vaccine that's 40 to 60% effective and less than half of the US population chooses to get one and roughly 20,000 Americans will die of the flu or flu complications. Oh, you'll mandate it like other vaccines are mandated in order to attend school, travel to some foreign countries, et cetera. 
We already have a growing number of anti-vaxxers refusing proven, tested, well-known vaccines that have been administered for decades but aren't necessarily safe. Do you really think people will flock to get a fast-tracked, quickly tested vaccine whose long-term side effects and overall efficacy are anyone's best guess? How long are we going to cancel and postpone and reconsider? You aren't doing in-person school until the second quarter? What if October's numbers are the same as August? You move football to spring? What if next March is worse than this one was? When do we decide quality of life outweighs the risks? I understand COVID can be deadly or very dangerous for some people, but so are strawberries and so is shellfish for some people. We take risks multiple times a day without second thought. We know driving a car can be dangerous. We don't leave it in the garage. Many speed and don't wear seat belts. We know the dangers of smoking, drinking, and eating fried foods. We do it anyway. Is hugging grandma really more dangerous than rush hour on the freeway? Is going out with friends after work more risky than four-day-old gas station sushi or operating a chainsaw? When and how did we so quickly lose our free will and give up our liberty? Is there a waiver somewhere I can sign that says, I understand the risks, but I choose life with hugs and smiles in the state fair and to go to church and hug my mom in her retirement home? I understand there's a minuscule possibility I could die, but I will most likely end up feeling like crap for a few days. I understand I could possibly pass it on to someone else if I'm not careful, but I can pass any virus on to someone else. I'm struggling to see where or how this ends. We either get busy living or we get busy dying. When God decides at your time, you don't get any mulligans. So I guess I would rather spend my time enjoying it and living in the moment and not worrying about what ifs and maybes. And I bet I'm not the only one. And I think that that is a very, very important point of view. Um, we deal with risk every day. And I love the way that our attorney put it during one conversation. He said, you know what? Skydiving is dangerous. I don't wanna do it. And for the record, I don't wanna do it either but we don't prevent other people from doing it. They sign a waiver saying, I know it's dangerous. I know what can happen. I can crash to the earth and die, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Driving on the freeway is dangerous. Flying in a plane is dangerous. Downhill skiing is dangerous. I think Sonny Bono died in a skiing accident, but we don't prevent people from getting on the slopes. We let people decide. And I think one of the most sad things I'm looking at is the number of people in nursing homes who are just dying of loneliness and despair and stop eating and they don't really care anymore about life, which is very sad. And I think that if we ask those people, because they're adults and they should decide for themselves, are you willing to go without family and friends for months at a time to reduce your risk of getting the virus? I haven't talked to a senior yet who says yes. I'm talk of course, I don't get to talk to seniors and nursing homes, unfortunately, don't have family there. But I certainly have talked to many seniors, people who are in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and they all say the same thing. I don't wanna give up my associations with people in order to avoid the flu. That's not a trade-off I wanna make. So we need to start letting people determine their own risk um, uh, assessment. I don't wanna skydive, you do, all right? I don't wanna downhill ski, you do. I'm not afraid of flying, you don't wanna get on a plane. Um, I take risks in business, you don't wanna own your own business. We have got to get to the place where we let adults decide what they want to do and what they feel comfortable with. And um, that's what I'm fighting for. That's what Make Americans Free Again is fighting for. That's what our lawsuits are fighting for, is to take back our ability to decide. If somebody decides they want to stay home, that's great. Do it. If you want to be masked, that's great. Do it. But we've got to get away from the idea that somehow we're going to mitigate all the risk. And I think that this writer asks a very important question I've been asking this lately. What's the end game? We are going to flatten the curve, then we're going to stop the spread. Does anybody know what the goal is? Nobody's asking the emperors and empresses that are in charge of our lives right now. But I, I, if I were invited to the press corps, I would ask, when is this over? Tell us when this is over. Is it no cases? Because if you keep testing asymptomatic people, you're going to find virus fragments. And we're always going to be in this situation. Ask yourself, do you want to be? I don't think so. My email address, pampopper at msn.com, makeamericansfreeagain.com is where you register, conference calls, how you find out how to get involved, um, uh, wellnessformhealth.com, where the forbidden video is, and you can sign up for my newsletter and get the forbidden written news. All right, that's it. As usual, pass this on to people who you think would be interested in learning more about all of this, and I will be back to you tomorrow with more news.